Hi everyone, today we are going to start another chapter from your plus two English. As you can see here, a three wheeled revolution. This is an interview with Irfan Alam, an entrepreneur. He's a great personality, an angster, and a real motivation for students like you. Okay, so this is from third unit, and already we have finished the first unit and the second unit by our Shafisar, and we are just going to start the third unit. So before you start up the new unit, better you go through the first page of your uh, third unit, you will get some information regarding this. Anyway, I am going to talk about the first chapter from the third unit, a three-wheeled revolution. So before I start, let me tell you one thing. What do you mean by entrepreneurship? like that's like a startup or a starting of a business or any program with a new idea like if i start a hotel for example if i start a hotel that's not an entrepreneurship that's not a startup it's like starting a business or starting a new business somebody has done before already successful one Entrepreneurship means starting something new, starting some new business. Uh, for example, when uh, somebody has launched a, an educational app like Baiju's or Ifriend, uh, that was an initiative at the beginning. After that, if somebody starts, that's not an entrepreneurship. Okay, Irfan Alam, this person, he is an Indian, a youngster from India. He was such an entrepreneur and he started a business related with the auto rickshaws or the rickshaw section of our India in our country. So you can read about him. So why we study such interview, you know? We have certain goals when we study this interview. The first thing is to know how to conduct an interview, how to answer an interview, and how to ask questions and prepare questions for interview. For maybe for your public examination, you must have the questions to prepare interview, maybe to ask questions, maybe to answer questions, anything it can be regarding the interview. Anyway, so the second thing regarding the theme of this interview, this is talking about business in your life. So you must get a motivation to start a business when you finish this chapter. So maybe you think of great jobs in your life. So what is the difference between a profession and a business? Well, business means our own business. See, the main difference, last year when I was talking in 7th standard, there was a boy. I asked him, he, he told his interest was in business. So I asked him why he was interested in business. So he told me that, you know, when we uh, do any job like maybe the high, highest profession, the highest profession, even though we will get a number of salaries like maybe one lakh, two lakhs, but we are limited to that salary, our potential, our capabilities. But when we do a business, what happens, you know, when we, when we do a business, we can assume some some days it will be increasing some times it will be decreasing so we will work on that and we will get more money we will be what we can earn money in case of a salary whatever it may be when i was paid 12000 when i was paid 20000 when i was paid 30000 my lifestyle or my all my expenses will be reduced to that that's a common philosophy that's the first point of a business so if you want if you want uh, to explore as a businessman same time oh my dear friends and students you must have some basic qualities and qualifications like you have to do you have to study degree pg everything after that i'm talking after plus two there are some students or some people who got great initiative uh, in their life when they were youngsters that's okay same time after uh, normally you people should uh, be qualified in in a minimum qualification you should gather that then only you can be great business people so always think about new ideas and always understand there is a scope 
there is scope for new business new ideas and for everything that's the point today okay i'm not going to elaborate it a lot so most teenagers dream big some of them pursue their dreams choosing a path different from those of others they design their own route of life success is for those who think big and act differently see here we have to underline success is for those sorry success is for those who think big and act differently that's a point here you just understand that point see you have to think big and act differently so if you want to be successful in your life look at your textbook you have to think big and act differently so here both things are there first of all you have to think and the second thing you have to act i hope you remember the poem from your plus one if by rudyard kipling don't you remember that so if you have dream that's good but don't make dreams your master but you should uh, join your dream with act i know many students many youngsters those people have great aim and they have uh, great dreams in their in their in, the, in their head and the, in their brain but they are not working on that whenever we ask someone from the new generation what's your plan they have plans but they are not working on that that's a great uh, what a foolishness which you are doing even if it is big always think big never think of small small things and never think inferior to yourself always think you are also a member in the society you are also a member in our country you are also a member in an institution and whatever change from the higher authority comes you can also think about it think about all human being they made change like uh, uh, coming to india maybe uh, ambani or anyone else they were like normal human being some of them in business some of them became uh, the they got money from their parents that's very rare think about bill gates everyone they had ideas they had ideas so ideas should speak uh, from that idea if you are confident enough about your idea see work on it that's why uh, usually we tell that don't do don't uh what don't allow any stupid personalities to speak about your idea if you are confident enough about it so whenever you have an idea you must be confident about it that's it and many teenagers so you should uh, think about your own future and the future generation of uh, your uh, generation also coming generation uh, after you you have to think about all of them and you must uh, build up a sustainable business or sustainable uh, entrepreneurship something uh, that is useful for all the society that we have to do here have you come across the word entrepreneurship meet irfan alam an entrepreneur who changes the lives of many people through his innovative enterprise here is an interview with him so we have an interview with him with um, with irfan alam meet mr irfan alam okay he is a proud personality we should be proud of him as indian okay so we are going through that so you will understand from him so before that let's know something about irfan alam who is irfan alam okay irfan alam is a founder and chairman of uh, Zaman Foundation, an Indian company which organizes the rickshaw filling sector in Bihar. Zaman means respect. Through his leadership, Zaman uh, has implemented innovations to increase operator income, such as advertising and music, newspaper, first aid, water, first aid, water juice for the passengers. Alam was also the first person to introduce the prepaid cycle rickshaws in India. In only two years, Alam has built a family of over 10,000 rickshaw operators across nine states of in India. See, I hope you understood about Irfan Alam. He is an Indian and his business was about rickshaws. He's, he had a startup of rickshaws. I will explain you what was his business. Suppose, 
One day, Irfan Alam was traveling in an auto rickshaw. He asked the driver whether he had water or not. The, that person replied, see, he hadn't any water because he had no money with him. Usually, what happened, you know, you already know the rickshaw pullers. Maybe they will be pulling the rickshaws, machine auto rickshaws will be there. It, it's like pulling the rickshaws. You already know that such people, such backward people, uh, both economically, educationally and uh, socially, they are backward. So, this person thought about giving the water or something else. Let them sell that. And when they get any profit from that, let them split it into two and they can divide it and they can use that. That was a point uh, from Irfan Alam's head. Another thing, these people will uh, drive auto rickshaws or they will pull auto, pull rickshaws. Uh, they will take it as a rent from any masters, any rich persons. Because these poor people, they were not able to uh, own a rickshaw. They were not able to own a rickshaw for them. That's why they were depending upon rich people. That's why they will pull the rickshaws all over the day and night, but they won't get much money, only a little. So, thinking about these poor people, Yudfan Alam started a startup. Like, he oh, first of all gathered the loyalty. I mean, he told every rickshaw driver, so you come with me. We will provide you rickshaws. And we will provide you bank loans to uh, buy rickshaws. After that, uh, we will give you space in, in rickshaws, some place of rickshaws, there will be a uh, place for advertising anything. So they will get money from that. In that advertising money, and he will give uh, some fruit, fruities or juice or water, mineral water. From that, they can uh, sell that and the profit will be uh, divided into two. And the money they get after pulling the rickshaws for driving that, that rent is completely for them. Eventually, this rickshaw drivers can own their rich their own after paying the amount of bank after that uh, they can they will get a good family and this become a great venture we will be explaining in detail about it okay even though he started his business very slow later he got look at this number look at this number people like how many people he got so uh, all those people were the member of his families okay that's why it became a great venture. So let's uh, start. Uh, although a first generation entrepreneur, Alam's effort to empower those at the bottom of uh, India's social hierarchy have been recognized widely. He has won the Business Bazigar Award. Look at this. He has won the a business bazigar a competitive reality show for entrepreneurs and the world banks in a uh, innovation award the second one okay innovation award and uh, see alam has also been recognized by the times of india as one of the top 13 youth icons of india and his business model was uh, recently featured in the, in the economist that is also a magazine at the entrepreneurship summit held at washington so he was uh, see at the entrepreneurship summit held at washington dc in 2010 president obama complimented look at the word irfan alam with the word you are doing a tougher job than me that was a compliment from barack obama for this indian angster let's go through the interview of this person okay the first thing read on the interview so uh, this is the professional way of starting an interview as he came after the summit which he had attended there in uh, Washington DC and uh, after that it was, interview was conducted so look at the first word congratulations on your achievement so that's usually people congratulate them and when and how did you uh, conceive this idea means how did you start or made this idea uh, you just picturized this picturized this idea in your head that was the first question okay uh, so he just started answering I was 17 years old at that time I was traveling in a rickshaw and in the middle of the journey I was very thirsty I asked her asked the rickshaw puller if he had any water he said that he did not carry water bottles because he did not have money to buy and uh, stack them I mean stock them 
means uh, uh, to stock in his uh, rickshaw. It set me thinking and immediately realized that there was a market for selling water bottles in rickshaws. The very next day, I talked to five rickshaw pullers and gave them each eight bottles of water. So, at the beginning of a business should be after understanding the need of the society, business should start from the bottom of the pyramid. If you are focusing the basic section of a society, for example, if you are coming with a product to the market, then uh, you should know who are the audience or who are the customers of that thing. After that only you can start up a business. Like that if you are, if you are starting, a, uh, for example, uh, um, simply talking, a rare thing in our life for example this like uh, what um, a business for elephants elephant food if you are making elephant food it's very really rare for example i'm talking so don't make such business so we should know they are focusing on the basic uh, sector uh, they are the poor people so they can uh, sell it and they can make benefit from this when he was 17 year old and you already know the history he was traveling so from this you have to understand two things the first thing look at this vocabulary set me thinking means it set me thinking means it led me to think over about it it led me to think over and the second thing here I hope you have heard about reported speech last class Shafi so was explaining me about reported speech right so here look at this I was very thirsty I asked the rickshaw puller if he had look at that word and just rewind the video of Shafi so you will get it correct and why whenever you study uh, reported speech or anything else you should match it with the content with the, with the content and with the textbook then you will get good idea about every grammar whatever grammar it may be passive voice it can be uh, or reported speech see so like that you just suppose how you write like yay asking do you have water see then if we t if i t tell you to make a report of speech see i ask the rickshaw puller if he had any water he said that look he said that he did not carry water bottles because he did not have money to buy that and stack them stack them means to stock it uh, to keep it with him that was it so two vocabularies were about reported speech and it set me thinking don't forget that word so uh, here in the next day when Irfan Alam understood that there was no water with uh, the rickshaw driver he did one thing he uh, bought uh, bottles of water and gave five rickshaw drivers and I told them that for every bottle they sold, we would make a profit of two rupees. So if I buy, uh, what? If I sell a bottle, I will get two rupees as a profit. Then I will give to the rickshaw drivers. When they sell it, we will get the profit of two rupees, one rupees for me, one rupees for you. Win to win situation equal for everyone. So they have no risk because I will buy the bottle, Irfan Alam will buy the bottle, they have no risk, they have only keep that in their bottle, so people will buy, that's the point here, okay, split in half, the very first day, at the beginning, I was a profit of 8 rupees, this is also important when you do a business, first thing was 8 rupees, that was a profit from the first day, I know many people in our life, like, now we have many money chain marketing like Bitcoin, Morris coin, many things. So you people are expecting miracle by a day. Understand this is not magic. We should join our business with logic. Whenever you spend money in any money chain or anything else, you should think what is the logic behind that? What is the logic behind that? Here, see, at the beginning, we should make a, a, a low, lower profit, then we can increase. It is like, you know, when you start a big business like with one crore or one lakh, uh, means 10 lakh or 15 lakh, and it's like, it's like what, you know, if you want to study swimming and you are jumping into the middle of the pond, you cannot escape. That's it. But when you start a business, like when you start swimming, if you are starting from the uh, one end of a, a pond, 
what happened you can swim and if there is any danger you can come back very soon when you spare 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs or one crore in a business and if you fail you cannot come back you will die there in the middle of the pond never do that never do that so whenever you start start slowly that's the point and never think of high profit by a day when someone come you and tell if you are joining in this in this money chain you will get that one and when you uh, when you invite your friend you will get the double uh, fold of this my dear friends cheating complete cheating day by day we can see such thing in the life so think twice before you do anything with your money okay the second question was you were very young when you when you came up with and executed this idea he was very young yes i guess entrepreneurship is in my blood that's a point people will be there with different taste so you should understand whether you are born to do a business or to do a job for me i am a teacher so because i believe i should teach I'm not a businessman and I can start a business with a partnership with someone else but I cannot look after that I cannot care about it got the idea like you should understand so Irfan Alam understood he in his blood there was business and everybody can do business I'm not demotivating you you must have ideas okay I had an interest in business from a very early age during the stock market scam 1992 in India there was a stock market scam scam in scandal or uh, like crisis there was a problem everything was um, collapsed or, or bank was collapsed banks were collapsed so there were some problems regarding the stock market and my father and many of his friends lost a lot of money they lost money so uh, at that time Irfan Alam started thinking about giving a remedy for all this problem and he started researching about stock market and other problem interestingly interestingly what happened you know using the advice of Irfan Alam his father and his friends got their money back so from that moment Irfan understood that he has an idea about business uh, losses and most of them started making profit. This enabled me to start my first portfolio management firm at the age of 13. When he was 13, this happened in 1992 when he was 13. Many of you were not born at that time, okay. Uh, I was one or two years old by that time in 1992 uh, see uh, when he was 13 he could first portfolio means uh, taking it's like a business term uh, taking fund from everyone to make a company okay so he just made the first portfolio for when he was 13 and he helped his help his father and his friends uh, to make over the problem which they had when my parents found out that I was dabbling, look at the word dabbling. Dabbling means just moving without any serious. For example, you are in the classroom and you came out for what? I, uh, I have a public speaking competition, that's why I am going to prepare. Then you are coming to library, simply sitting there, coming back to class, going without any serious activities. So we can talk about you. You were dabbling in public speaking, means without any seriousness, Without some, some people are doing neat coaching, some people are doing CMA coaching, but they are not much serious in that one. Then you can use the word dabbling in rickshaw sector. So uh, this person, Irfan Alam, was dabbling in rickshaw sector. He was not serious, but he was thinking sometime about it, not thinking about something. When uh, his parents understood that, they pulled me aside and asked me to stop doing it and concentrate on my studies, like every parents. Whenever you do something, your parents will say. Now this is the time for studying to it, right? That's a point, understand it. At the time of studying and making the basic qualification, do it, okay? Then you can work on your dream, you can uh, pursue your dream, you can do everything what you like. That's a point, okay? So I shelved it, I shelved it means I put it aside, put my interest never waned, but my interest never waned means never weakened. I kept reading and researching on the sector all through my college days in Pondicherry, when he was in Pondicherry, for what he went to Pondicherry to be doing the masters in foreign trade, at that all time he was thinking about rickshaw pullers and rickshaw business. That's a point, when we get an idea, work on it and you will see the miracle. Okay, that was the point. Coming to the next question, fourth question. Was someone started with the seed money? I'm sorry, this is...
Third question, look, what was the spark that revived this idea? So when we revived means to give this idea. When we uh, have any idea, when we start something, we must have a spark. Whenever we do something, we should have a spark to start it or to start that. See, we should get it. Sometime in a dream or when we travel, we see something and we think about it. There will be a spark of doing everything, isn't it? Yeah. So what was the spark? See, in 2006, an Indian TV show called Business Bazigar launched. So if you are searching Business Bazigar in YouTube, you will get the idea about it. Launched an entrepreneur hunt and solicited ideas, uh, ideas for a new business. So they were asking ideas for new business. It's, it was like a competition. If anybody come with a new idea, they will be given the prizes. Okay. I entered this contest with a business proposal. My idea was to organize a rickshaw sector and make it a profitable venture. So his idea was to organize the rickshaw sector and to make it a profitable venture. Now you can see such people like Uber Taxi, Ola Taxi. When we go to a, a city, we don't have to go, go to the uh, town and ask for an auto rickshaw or any taxi. We have to Google and we have to tell, see, yeah, I want a, a rickshaw or a car from railway station this time to this place. It's very simple. They will be there waiting for us. That's a great thing, right? Yeah. According to my proposal, rickshaws were to be de redesigned so that the spaces on the vehicles could be sold for the purpose of advertising and brand promotion. So this was the basic idea, brand promotion and uh, advertising. So if there is a space there in auto rickshaw, they can advertise that. Also, I indicated that additional revenue could be made by selling products like water, juice, biscuit, mobile cards. So they can sell all this. I hope this is very clear for you. How they made profit from rickshaw? They will redesign the rickshaw. They will give a space for what? For what they will give a space to give advertisement. When we give advertisement, they will give us money. And they, they kept a small box there. There he will keep some mineral water, juice, biscuits. Uh, passengers can buy that. Okay, like we are buying from train. Then there will be profit and they will get the rent of their or the uh, fare of their auto or uh, their rickshaws when they pull that got the idea see and what was his price that got money and that was a seed money means basic money 150 lakhs they got 150 lakhs so the next question comes like was Saman started with that seed money? He got seed money from where? From that business bazigan. Was it started with that seed money? No, not at all. No. Uh, I very soon realized that the entry barrier to this business was very low. When we have an entry barrier to business, when we start a business, we need money and we need many other things. That's entry barrier. Once we enter, we can do well, but we must have entry barrier. So what was the entry barrier to this uh, was, we have to gather the loyalty of all, trust of all rickshaw drivers or rickshaw pullers. See, the only way to sustain this business was to earn the loyalty of the rickshaw pullers. I wanted to provide insurance, ID cards and uniforms to the rickshaw pullers. I wanted to run this as a not-for-profit organization. To be honest with you, I was not thinking about social entrepreneurship at the point. I just thought that it would be the best way to sustain the business and the easiest way to get back to give out loans. I see easiest way uh, to get banks to uh, give out loans when we do something like that banks will give them loans when we implement all those things and make it professional uh, Irfan Alam or the Saman Foundation they uh, provided or they helped the rickshaw pullers for what to accept the loan uh, to get loan from the bank that was a point okay business e easiest way to do it uh, since the organization of the TV show did not agree to this model. But this uh, TV organization of Bazigar, they did not start uh, thought of this model because they need another model. That's why I didn't accept that money. But I gathered um, the loyalty of the people and we started the business. That was a point. Okay. Listen. 
I thought if uh, if I could create an organization that could empower the rickshaw pullers and find a way to increase the overall revenue, it would be a win-win situation for both. See, so he thought of a social entrepreneurship. It will be like helping the uh, backward people of the society. So if he make an organization and help them, he can make a win-win situation. They also win. When total revenue comes, I can also make benefit from that. It would be a win-win situation. As in, uh, I firmly believe in C.K. Prahlad's idea that business, so what is the idea of Prahlad? Business can be successful by targeting the bottom of the pyramid, lower society. Salman was finally founded in 2007 with the seed money from family and friends. So, we, they got money from family and friends. They started Salman Foundation, the organization of rickshaw pullers. Understand it well, okay? Coming to the first question. So, in the beginning, it was a successful, uh, when did this turn into a true successful venture, I mean social venture? At the beginning, it was very small. I told you we have to start very low, very slow, then we can go very fast. Okay. When we start very fast, we will be tired very soon. As I interested more about the lives of the rickshaw pullers and their plight in eternity to a social cause. So, when I started the business, I never thought of making a social benefit from this. But after getting into them, I understood their situation. They were poor, they had children, they were not educated well. There was no such opportunity of educating them also. So, I thought of what? So, I thought of uh, uh, empowering them also. That was the starting to make it as a social one. There are about 10 million rickshaw operating in India. Oh God! Most of these rickshaw pullers do not own the rickshaws but instead rent them at the rate of 30 to 40 rupees per day. Look at this statistics. There will be a rich person. He will own an auto rickshaw or a rickshaw. Then what happened, you know? These people have to rent 30 to 40. Maybe if they get 100 rupees, what will happen? When they get 100 rupees, they have to pay the rent and they cannot own this rickshaw at any time in their life. The money they make after paying the rent is barely sufficient to sustain their families. I mean, to meet the need of their families, it was very low. They continue to remain at the bottom of the pyramid. Always they were at the bottom of the pyramid. So it was my duty and our responsibility to make them up. That's a great point, okay. So that was a begin. Uh, uh, from these five questions, I just quoted some uh, thing for you. Entrepreneur, someone who starts their own business, especially when this is involves seeing a new opportunity, scam, scandal, a failure, portfolio, a collection of company shares and other investment that are owned by a particular person or organization, dabble to try something for a short period, not very serious, waiting to become weak. Okay, in something. I hope you got all this word. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Study this word and understand about the idea which I shared you always. So let's move to the next part. Okay. Oh, simply I wrote uh, this is part two. Nothing. Coming to the next question with Irfan Alam in the interview. Can you describe the operation model of Saman? So you must have also the same doubt. How Saman work? That what is their basic work? So coming to the answer. When a rickshaw puller approach Saman, we first go through a verification process. Uh, the operator is then given training on basic etiquette and traffic rules. And uh, they, we will approach the bank to help them to get loan for the new rickshaw. Previously, banks were not ready to give them a uh, loan. But since uh, we are become the guarantors, they will get loan. So how they work? First thing, there will be a verification process. And uh, the operators in the given, they will give training for what? In the basic equity means rules and regulations of traffic rules. Etiquette, you already know that word, especially in the business. And we will give them as third, we will give them loan, we will, and we will be the guarantors for them. That's a great point. To, to get a loan, see, become the guarantors for giving the loan. So that was our help for the people, okay? So the next question comes like, the rickshaw pullers feel truly empowered when they drive their own vehicle. That's a great point, right? They are, Zaman will provide loan. I mean, they will be mediator between this rickshaw driver, rickshaw puller and between uh, the bank. 
and when they feel when they pay the loan from this benefit from the from their profit day by day they will get their own rickshaws right so they will feel proud about themselves right we provide the rickshaw pullers with accident and health insurance so there was insurance policy coming to the saman foundation's work okay each driver is given an id card and is required to wear uniform while operating the rickshaw the rickshaw pullers are uh, now or comes a part of the saman see they they becomes a part of the saman family so when they become the family they they are giving family counseling family classes everything when when we become in a firm we should support that people for example if you become a businessman what we have to do you know you have to support your staff and the members then only they will work for your benefit otherwise they will go to another institution whenever they get good chances how does someone help to increase the revenue of the rickshaw pullers how does someone itself get its revenue maybe you are also thinking how someone get the benefit benefit or the profit and how people get benefit by this what is the special benefit look at this Saman rickshaws are de designed in such a way that they have plenty of space to display advertisement. So, first thing to get profit is advertisement when you watch IPL, when you watch anything, any channel or any Facebook page or any YouTube channel and everything there is uh, profit by advertising something, right? Several local and national brand places their advertisement here. The advertisement revenue is split in half between Saman and the rickshaw pullers. That's great, right? Good. Also, rickshaw pullers can choose to sell water, fruit, sell. If whenever they sell all this, that revenue is split into two between Saman and the people. In that case, they come to a, an inter, uh, a central rickshaw yard in the morning. So, uh, like a train comes, all people will come to one place. They will pack up their own biscuit, juice, everything. They will go and uh, they will get the profit. And what happens? That that will be split, splitted into two and they will get the money. And whatever the fare they get, look. At the end of the day, the profit from their sales is split between them and Saman. The money that rickshaw pullers earn by transporting the passengers is solely theirs. This is a knotted point. Means, you know, when they uh, get uh, money by transporting the passengers, that's for themselves. So they will get that profit. Understand? And the revenue of our rickshaw pullers have increased 30 to 40 percent. That's not a normal increase. Really great. There are several other benefits or, on which we cannot put a mandatory, uh, a monetary value. Look, when we become a family, when we become a company, there will be different kind of benefits which we get from different people. We cannot give a monetary value for everyone. Here, what was that? See. Uh, like uh, deaf rickshaw pullers now have a sense of belonging and empowerment so what is the first step of empowering any society give them a mentality they are that they are free and they can be empowered and they are independent that in that they, they want children of the operators and their spouses attend free or, or evening classes of Saman Gyan. That that was another another program with them. Saman Gyan. That was the name of a class. Saman has uh, brought dignity and inclusion to those who were previously considered menial laborers. So these people were uh, considered as very locals, but Saman could give them what prosperity and made them empowered made them standard and feel themselves motivated okay in addition i'm very happy to say that saman itself is a profitable last fiscal year means last uh, what uh, what we what we call like financial year uh, we uh, made a net profit of 8 lakh rupees and a revenue of 50 lakh rupees total revenue was 50 lakh and our profit was 8 lakh that's great Okay, my mentors have always emphasizing the uh, importance of sustainability. I also would like to tell you, sustainability means we should sustain and go on with our business. Don't fail very fast. So don't make over uh, profit from a, from a firm uh, by a day or two. Make it one by one, one by one. Then you can crack it very well. Okay. See, does someone get directly involved in microfinancing? See, giving fund. 
micro financing means uh, with uh, giving fund as a help no they no we do not directly do that micro finance the rickshaw pullers we just enable the rickshaw pullers to get finance from banks we will help the rickshaw pullers to get loan from bank we will be a guarantors for them and we will promote them for that to get finance from banks instead of paying rent for decades look at this this point is clear when they take loan from bank what they get as a benefit you know they were paying rent for years and lifelong instead of that rickshaw pullers only pay the bank loan as installment and eventually becomes the owner of their rickshaws that's a great point and that's another point of empowerment are in cycle rickshaw a dying breed dying breed means it's going to end means it's not uh, something we can expect all time that was a question relevant one right so what was the answer rickshaw continue to be a popular mode of transportation in most parts of the country in india now we can see also in our native places also even though we people have car and bike everything else rickshaws are still important and especially in in the nook and co a nook and uh, nook and corner and the root remote areas of our country still we use rickshaws right yeah the number of rickshaws in new delhi has actually increased a 20 percentage increase there in the last two three years it was then 2006 or some, some 2010 this interview okay the reason for this increase is that it has become the uh what choices form of uh, transport means every everyone can choose that transport mode to carry passengers to and from the metro station also i personally think rickshaws are the vehicles of the future they are in environment friendly we have an r and d wing r and d wing means research and development wing and they uh, they were also working on a solar powered fiberglass rickshaws solar powered fiberglass rickshaws they were working on that if they make that they would, that will make additional benefit so irfan alam was answering that rickshaws are not a dying breed in every part of country we use it and actually new delhi it was increased by 20 percentage that's also a great point so when you answer question you must make clarity what one would experience at the presidential entrepreneurship summit at the united states he just came after this on uh, this summit and he came to give interview i met some truly great people i was indeed honored to talk to the nobel prize laureate muhammad yunus he invited me to bangladesh to help uh, to, to help him to set up a similar organization of rickshaw workers there so he could meet this great person you can search about him he was a Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus from Bangladesh this person invited Irfan Alam to Bangladesh to start the same thing so whenever we get opportunity to participate in great company in, uh, in in some programs some stages utilize it always because that will give you an exposure no doubt okay another thing look what is your advice to students on entrepreneurship so people like you what is the advice of Irfan Alam? This is uh, what exclusively for you. An entrepreneur, entrepreneur is one who identifies an opportunity and puts his uh, conscious effort to make it an enterprise. So if there is an opportunity for the need of the people, understand it first. Work on it, your, your conscious effort, not a simple effort, conscious effort and work on it you will get. People generally discourage youth from trading this path, treading this path. When people start, tread means they step into that. When they step into that path, people dis discourage. Why are you doing that? Why you do this? Why don't you start studying and doing that and all things they were talking, okay? But in this time, it's, it's time to start thinking about entrepreneurship as a career. As it can be an important tool to tackle unemployment in the country, it is important to dream, but it is equally important to take calculated risk to achieve it. You can dream, but you should calculate the risk which you have to face when you start a business, when you start something else. That is a point. First thing, you have to think about entrepreneurship. And the second thing, dream, act. And the third thing, don't discourage the people. And the basic thing, find an opportunity and a space to start a business. Okay, that's a point. Thank you very much for sparing the time to talk to us. We wish you the very... So this is also as a formality of an interview. Like, what you know? 
when we start we have to start congratulating them and giving them uh, to a space to introduce themselves and the second thing when you end you have to thank because they spend their time with us thank you very much for sparing the time to talk to us we wish you a very best for a unique journey thanks it's it's a blessing for me to uh, and for my mentors to well wishes and carry on my journey forward that's a great so look interview given to sujada ram prasad for india currents in may 2010 after participating in the entrepreneurship summit washington that was it so this is an interview by irfan alam he made this interview for ram prasad uh, for india current and uh, you got the idea about entrepreneurship how to start it and saman foundation and go through the works and the activities of the textbook and you should do that okay and uh, never forget to go through the notes of the textbook we are going to finish this chapter okay before that just understand some words fiscal means uh, connected with public money fiscal year okay we got that like financial year r and d research and uh, development equity basic rules and uh, uh, norms socially which is socially accepted menial means very local unimportant low skilled I hope this is very clear and the chapter is very clear. This was interesting one, nothing complicated to understand. Anyway, when you are asked to, so never forget to prepare interviews with people and study how to ask question for interview, how to answer for interview. All the best for your future and come up with a great startup and initiative and on an enterprise. All the best again. Thank you so much.